we can scale down the conditions that are experienced in the sea, we can scale down the environment, and we can also scale down the model itself. And then we can measure in, in detail, we can control the environment and set the conditions we want to set, and we can understand how the device performs. Deep water is really important in scale model testing because these devices are going to be deployed out in the open sea. We can move that water around to generate currents and we can put wave energy through that water column and that gives these developers access to the type of testing in a controlled environment that they simply cannot get elsewhere. In the Coast Research Group we work primarily in two lines of research. Coastal engineering and marine energies. We found that the data that we produce here is highly repeatable and that's fundamentally important to developers and researchers alike. And the aim here really is to incubate technology in the southwest and get a new industry going and provide the academic research support to get marine renewable devices into the water and generating electricity. We are a strong prominent feature in the southwest marine energy park which is a supply chain process for developers where they can come to us as a university, have their testing carried out, and then we can move them deeper into Cornwall where they can start getting sea experience. So it's a very important step on the pathway to developing uh, marine renewable energy devices. So if we take the example of a wave energy device, um, in order to, uh, to understand how it's going to work, to predict its performance, you need to use a combination of numerical modelling or theoretical testing together with scale model testing um, in order to really get a good appreciation of how the model works and its commercial viability uh, before you then move on to the next stage which would be at sea testing at larger scale and then full scale demonstration with a grid connected site. A laboratory like this is, is a very powerful scientific instrument. We can repeat forcing conditions and that allows developers to make small adjustments or optimizations to their devices so that they can compare one setting to another in order to generate maximum power if they wish or better survivability if they prefer that. We're standing in the coast basin uh, and this is a basin that allows uh, flows to be run past models uh, and it allows waves to be run past models so that we can look at scaled effects of things like uh, wind farm monopile foundations or wave energy devices. I think the thing that most excites me is trying to understand the uh, things that are going on in the natural environment. So trying to understand how the flows work around the monopiles, trying to understand how the seabed responds. Uh, so Things like trying to work out the, the downstream impacts of the monopile in terms of the level of turbulence, uh, the strength of the flow in the region of the monopile, and also how that affects the seabed. You've got here state-of-the-art equipment where you can control everything, everything's in a controlled environment, um, and so that we can really get useful data out of our experiments. I think testing like this is the most exciting thing. Um, everybody gets the chance to either choose uh, to physical testing or you can do some numerical testing or some numerical finding. Um, personally, I think the best thing is doing something that's never been done before. Um, we can come into some facilities like these that many unis don't have. Um, we, we can test a theory that's perhaps never been done before um, and we can find data that nobody knows about. I suppose the future for us is continuing to push the boundaries of the science that we're involved in. The future for the industry is probably going out to larger arrays of devices and that's some of the research that we're doing here is really feeding into that future development. Because we are starting to realise that instead of building structures to protect ourselves from the incoming wave energy, seeing this wave energy as the enemy, if you want, we have seen that wave energy is not the enemy, or tidal energy for that matter, it is a means to produce electricity and at the same time it is a means to protect the coast. So I think we are changing and the, the perspectives that we used to have as coastal engineers say 15 or 20 years ago are completely different now thanks to the advent of marine energy. If we look into the future we need to think about sustainability and the investments that the university has made in this laboratory are a 
are a, an outright statement that sustainability is where we need to be. It's always nice to be doing something you believe in uh, and being able to change people's lives uh, and to contribute to research and development of technologies that make people's lives better is what, what scientists and engineers like doing and especially civil engineers uh, and uh, mechanical engineers that we work with as well. So testing of large arrays of wave energy devices is something that we're doing a lot of research on here at the moment and our research is leading directly in to the future deployment of large arrays at sea. So I think the combination of the researchers above all and the facilities are the two elements that, uh, that uh, make us a, a strong group, I'd say. If facilities like this don't exist, then it's going to be a trial and error, very costly procedure for developers. Through our, our strong teaching and research and commercial work um, that we're doing within the Coast Laboratory here at Plymouth, um, and working together with our partners in the region um, and our key role within the development pathway for, for wave energy, then we're making a, a major contribution to the marine renewable energy industry.